Hi guys. Welcome everyone. Sorry, I'm just gonna try to make my setup a little better. Alright, so we'll wait a couple of minutes for everyone to join us and then we're going to start just to make sure we're not missing anyone and everyone is here. So this is what we're painting today. Hopefully all came with the canvases prepared and pre-sketched because we're gonna start with a pre-sketch here. Right, so I have my pre sketch right here, which is what we're gonna need. And you guys can use any size that you have, there's no particular size that you have to use, whichever size works for you, it's all good. Um, yeah, no particular size in my case, I'm gonna be using 16 by 12 inch canvas, so it's not too big, not too small. I find that it's a really great size, but Totally up to you which size you want to use. Just keep in mind the bigger you go, the more difficult it's going to be. The smaller you go, the easier it's going to be. But other than that, it doesn't really matter. All right, so I think we can start and hopefully if anyone is still missing, they'll join us shortly. So welcome guys. If we haven't met before, my name is Vera. I will be your instructor for today, and we're gonna be reproducing uh, Paul Cezanne's picture with fruits. Uh, you can refer to my painting, this is my version of it, or you can refer to, refer to the actual original of his painting, whatever works better for you, neither is, is a mistake, either is great. So what are we gonna start with here? We're gonna start with this top. It's very complicated painting in a way of color mixing, there are a lot, a lot of colors here, so I'm going to be getting sometimes a little closer to show you guys all the colors here. I'm going to start with the top, and we will do all imaginable shades of green, blue, purple. Um, yeah, pretty much green, blue, purple, but they're all going to be like a pastel colors, half tones, and so on. Yes, hi. Nice to have you guys. Then after that, we're going to move to the bottom. And on the bottom, we're going to start with the black. It's not what we usually do. Black, we usually don't add until the very end. Not in this case. In this case, black is going to be somewhat an underlay that we're going to start with. And then in the end, if we need to add a little bit more black, we can always add that as well. Um, yeah, so we'll start with some black. Then we'll do this dark brown background. And again, it's going to be a lot of different shades of brown here. Uh, some more orangey, some more, there's going to be a little bit of purple here. Anyway, a lot of colors. So if you have pre-mixed brown, that's definitely an asset. If not, not a problem. We can mix it. I don't have pre-mixed brown, only have my primaries. After we have top and a bottom background, then we're going to start working on our elements. We will start with a picture, and then we'll just go in a row for all. Um, and we'll hit all our fruits here, pretty much. And then we'll just add final layer of highlights and black, and that would be the end of that. All right, now let's go through our supplies. Pretty standard set of supplies. We're gonna use primary colors only, or at least that's what I'm using. If you guys prefer pre-mixed, go for it, doesn't matter. 
uh, but I'm going to be using yellow, white, red, blue, black. I will be using three to four different brushes. So for this one, because my canvas is fairly small, I don't need a large brush. The biggest brush that I'm going to go with is going to be a medium large. So it's just a little bit bigger than standard medium. Or you can even use standard medium as your biggest one. But again, the bigger the canvas, the bigger you want your brushes to be. So in my case, this is my biggest one, but I also have a few different sizes of medium small brushes. I have medium small and medium very small. <laughs> if you're interested in numbers, that is 11, this is eight, this is four, but really it doesn't matter. As long as you're comfortable with your brushes. For this particular technique, I would highly recommend having square brushes, just because a lot of brush strokes on Cezanne's paintings are square. They have the square edge to them. So if you have square brushes, you're probably gonna get more of that effect. But again, if you don't have square brushes, that's totally fine. It just your lines are gonna be a little bit smoother if you use um, a rounder brush, but that's not a problem. That still will look great. And of course, you're gonna need a paper towel and water. So make sure you have that. And that is it. We can move to painting our top. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna put this one on the bottom here and I'm gonna put this one on top so you can kind of see a little bit of both. Maybe we can go a little higher here too. So we're gonna start um, on this end and the first color I wanna start with is gonna be a very light um, bluey gray, so like a pearl color. So I'm gonna take my largest brush that I have, I'll dip it in the water, I'll scoop some white, then to that white, I'm gonna take, add the tiniest, tiniest little smidge of blue. You see, to give it just a tiny hint of blue. And then the tiniest, tiniest little smidge of black. You know, maybe even a little bit more than that. All right, so it's like a nice light bluey gray. Guys, keep in mind, we wanna keep our top fairly light. As you can see, um, all the colors are pretty light. So let's try this. Oh yeah, that's a perfect color. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start somewhere right here. And with this brush, with a vertical brush strokes, not using a lot of paint, the whole technique of this painting is gonna be, you're gonna be using very little bit of paint because we're gonna be overlapping colors rubbing them into each other and if you use too much paint it's all going to turn into a mess because it's all going to be blending smudging and creating uh, a big mess which we don't want we don't want a big mess so let's use just a little bit of paint oh thanks vicky <laughs> All right, so technically you can add it anywhere because this is just such an underlay color that we will cover over it no problem, but it has to go somewhere in the middle. Like this is important, it has to go there because we're gonna see it there. But if there are any spots that you just wanna add a smidge here and there, you can. Not gonna be a mistake. I'll add some right here too. And don't be afraid to cover your lines a little bit or go onto your lines, not a big deal. We can recover our lines later. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's good. Great job if you freehanded this. Awesome.
All right, next color, I'm gonna move to the shades of green here. So I will go green, then blue, then purples. Purples I wanna add last. So there are a couple different shades of green that we're gonna add here. Some is gonna be warmer green, some is gonna be colder green. I'm gonna start with a warmer and a lighter green. So I'm gonna wash the same brush and I'm gonna mix a new spot. So I'll start with white again, put it on the side. And the green that I'm aiming for my first one, let me show you on a painting so you know what to aim for. I'm gonna go for this one. It's like a warmer one and a lighter one out of all that we have there. So, again, I took some white, put it on the side. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow just a little bit, we're not trying to make a very dark or like a vibrant color, it still has to be pastel color. And then just a tiny, tiny smidge of blue, less than yellow. Yes, that is a great color. So this is the color I'm gonna be using. You see how light and pastel it is? That's what you want. And it's definitely on a warmer side. Like it almost has like a yellowy tint to it. That's what you want. And here, I'm gonna start somewhere here with this color. And again, I'm gonna be using the same vertical brush strokes with just a little bit of paint. Of course, you should use enough paint for you to cover the canvas fully. You don't wanna see the white canvas coming through, but also don't use too much. We don't want to have a thick layer of paint. And if it goes near nearby, basically if you touch the nearby colors, you wanna overlap them a little bit because all colors are gonna be overlapping one another. That's how we're gonna create that entire top. So don't be afraid to lightly overlap the nearby colors. I'm gonna add a little bit of this here. A little right here. And A little bit right here, make a nice little patch there. All right, I'll give you guys a second and then we'll move to our next green. And again, top is like super free flow, so nothing to stress about. If it looks a little different, it's totally fine. So now, if you still have a little bit of the same green, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna add a bit more blue to it. If you don't have any more, you're gonna need to mix a new one. And to that one, just it's the same ingredients, just a little bit more blue. I might need to make a little more of it because I don't have that much left. So I might need to add a little bit of everything, but really more blue this time. You know, we're not trying to make it super blue, we're just making it colder. So it's more like a mint green or just normal green versus a light green. So let's try this. Oh yeah, that's a great color. Could be a little lighter. And with this color, I'm gonna go right here. 
And you see I'm lightly overlapping all the nearby colors. So it doesn't look just like patch that's not merged into anything. All of them need to be merged into one another. So I'll add a patch there. I'll add a patch underneath here. Definitely right here. Right here on the bottom. Here on top. Right here on top, we go pretty heavy on this color actually. As you notice, there are quite a few places where I'm adding it. All right, and that's pretty much it. I'm not gonna be adding it anywhere else. And I should probably switch my tea with my water because I almost dipped my brush in the tea. So let's put them in a different spots. And again, I'll give you guys a couple of minutes to not rush you through this, and then we'll move to the next color. Technically, um, the best way to do this is fast, <laughs> because then your colors are still wet, and it's better to have them somewhat wet. You don't want them to dry fully. I mean, it's not a big deal if they dry. It's still doable. It's just a little bit harder to blend them into each other. So yeah, we wouldn't be waiting too long here, but I can give you a few minutes. All right, let's move to our next color. So for the next color, we're just gonna go colder and darker. So again, if you still have a little bit of this color, you're just gonna add a bit more blue to it. Just a little, we're not trying to turn this into a full on blue. It still needs to be green. It just needs to be bluer and slightly darker green because it's all about 
mint tones, mint shades. And again, if you don't have any left, you can make more always. And with this darker color, do you see it's not a big difference, but it is definitely darker. I'm gonna go right here. I'm gonna add some here. So when you're adding over a white canvas, you wanna use a little bit more paint. And when you are merging it over the nearby colors, you can just dry brush it on with using just a tiny touch of paint. So I always try to start on areas that don't have paint just yet after I refill my brush with paint, because that's when I have the most paint on my brush. And then as I empty my brush a bit more on those areas, then I can just dry brush whatever is left onto nearby sections. All right, that's pretty much it for this color. And next one, I'm gonna be moving to a bluer colors. So you could technically even use the same spot for mixing it, or you can start a full new spot, doesn't matter. You're gonna add white. make it light or start with white doesn't matter and add just a tiny touch of blue to make nice fairly light blue so the difference between this one and the color we used up front the first one is the first one had a little bit of black mixed into this one is just blue and white and if there's some green that gets into it is fine and with this color I'm gonna go right here, so a little bit in between here to overlap the colors and a little bit lower right here. Again, lightly and make sure it overlaps the nearby colors. Um, I'm gonna add some right here. I want some right here too. And that's pretty much it for this color. All right, then we're gonna go to darker blue. So on the same spot, to the same color, I'm gonna take a little bit more blue and add it in. And when I say darker, I don't mean dark blue. Just has to be a little bit darker. This might even be a little too dark, but we wouldn't know until we try, so we're gonna try. Let's try C. One of the spots where I'm gonna be adding it, it's gonna be right here. I'm gonna be overlapping this section. 
So not lower, there's gonna be another color here, but right here. Oh yeah, this is perfect. You see, it's not very dark, but it's definitely the darkest out of those that we have right now. And make sure it's very nice and light in a way that you add the paint because again, if you add it blobby, it's gonna be more like a blob that's not merging into the wrist. Right, and I'm gonna add some right here. And I'm also gonna add some right here. Done for this color. I'll give you guys another minute and then we're gonna move to our purples. All right, so for our purple, now for this one, make sure there is no yellow premixed into your color because it's gonna ruin your purple if you if you have some yellow premixed into it. You just need to have white, blue, and red. Ideally, you wanna use more of a pinker base red, such as a magenta base red. My red, it's actually called primary red, but it's more of a magenta base red. It doesn't have yellow premixed into it. So it's a perfect color to use. If you don't have that, you can use pink. And if you still have a little bit of blue we just used, you can just add a little bit of that red or pink to that blue, and it should bring you to the right color. And if it gets a little too dark, you can always add some white to it. Like in my case, for example, this is definitely a little too dark. All right, this I think is better. So just white, blue, and red or pink. All right, guys, and with this color, I'm gonna go on top right here. I'm gonna brush it on. And you see it's very light. Then with the same purple, I'm gonna move on to here. And so all around the bottom, so right here,
Some breaks here. And this spot right here too. And a little bit right here, and I'm going to overlap it right over that blue. So I'll give you guys a second again, and then we'll move to your next color. And after this, guys, I want to move to our last, well, almost last color. And that's going to be more of a muddy color. So to the same purple you just used, if you have that, you're going to add a little bit of yellow. So that's going to make it more like a brown. Um, if it doesn't, add a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow. And you will notice it's just going to make it a little muddier. And of course, add some white because as you add other colors, it's getting a little darker. We're not trying to make it darker, we're just trying to make it more neutral than with a hint of brown. If you have premix brown, you can even add a smidge of premix brown. That will also work. And on this color, I'm going to cover this last spot right here. I'll overlap my purple in the middle. Okay, so now very last color for the top is optional. And that color is, is a, either a light gray or straight white. And I'll tell you why. So if there are certain areas that you have that are a little bit too dark or um, maybe not merged properly, very light gray is more of a neutral color. So either you can start with the color we started with originally, do you remember that light gray with a smidge of blue? And just add it here and there to make it more smooth and blended. You don't have to go over everything. So just if you have like a spots that are a little harsh, you can do that. Or if you want to really lighten it up, you can take straight white, but make sure you really rub it into your brush and only use a tiny touch and you can blend it a little with straight white. Do you see how light it is? Because I'm using just a touch of it and I'm really rubbing it in. So I'm gonna be using straight white, but I know again, straight white is a little tricky. So if you would prefer to use maybe light gray or light bluey gray instead, or 
honestly any light color that's more of a neutral color you can use that my background is done I'm super happy with this so I'm gonna stop I'm gonna give you guys a couple more minutes when you have it give me a thumbs up let me know in chat that you have it and you're ready to go and we're gonna move to our bottom so yeah whenever I see a couple thumbs ups in chat then we'll move to the bottom Yes, first thumbs up. Awesome, guys. We'll wait a couple more minutes and then we'll move. Ready, great. Awesome job. All right, so I'm gonna switch it to the bottom now so you can function a little different. I'll do it like this. So we can see the bottom and work on the bottom part now. So for the bottom, as I mentioned earlier, we are actually gonna start with a straight black. So you can use, um, I would say medium small brush if you have that. 
and you're only going to use a little bit of black because again we're trying to dry brush it on we don't want it thick And I'm going to go on this edge here. So I'm going to add a little bit on the edge. And I'm using sometimes the top edge of my brush because my brush is versatile, right? All square flat brushes are quite versatile. They can give you wide lines if you use the full width, but they can give you a really fine line if you use the top edge. So that's why I personally love square brushes and they perfectly match the Suzanne style. So. Good. So I'm going to be using sometimes more of a top edge and sometimes I'm going to be using full width. But if you kind of go a bit more heavy on black here, it's not a problem. Totally fine because we're going to overlap all the other colors over it. So I wouldn't be too afraid to add too much. Too much is fine in this case. And I am watering down my black as well, just a little bit. Because I find that if I don't, it doesn't go all the way into my canvas. It just stays on the surface. Now, really, black is a dark color. It needs to go all the way into the texture of your canvas. Otherwise, you're going to see those white specks coming through. Here, I'm going to add this dark shadow. All right, so fruits too, you can go around your fruits because we're adding black, it's gonna be a great backdrop for all of it. So don't be afraid to add some around fruits as well. So do you see I'm spreading it a little bit more underneath this little plate here? Don't get it on the plate itself. Um, be careful with that because the plate itself is going to be white. So we don't need any black there. Well, we'll add some gray, but no black, no straight black. Only around and underneath. A little bit of shadow from this fruit going to the side. And guys, um, if you need a bit more time, you can rewind this video even as we are just live. But also the video is going to be saved here. It's not going anywhere. It's 
going to be here pretty much forever. So if you can't stay the entire event today, something comes up, someone calls you and it's an important phone call, or um, your kids are giving you a hard time and not letting you paint, or whatever else comes up, and you want to do it some other day, that's okay. The video is going to be right here, so you can come back to this any day. All right, that's all my black underlay. Not any, any more black underlay, that's pretty much it. So I'll give you guys a couple minutes. And then we can move to our browns. All right, guys, so for those who have premix brown, great, you can use it. For those of us who don't have premix brown, um, we're going to start by mixing just regular dark brown. We're not going to start using dark brown. We're actually going to work from light to dark here. Um, but we will start by mixing dark brown because that we will use as a base for mixing all the other shades of brown. And you can use whichever brush for mixing, doesn't really matter. 
So to mix brown, you're gonna start with yellow. And you're gonna scoop some yellow on the side. I'm gonna use quite a bit just because we have a lot of brown to it. And then you're gonna mix in equal part of red. So just mix together equal parts of red and yellow. And then to that mixture, you're gonna start adding black little by little. So tiny touch by tiny touch. Let me do this here. So just so you still can see this. So I'll take a little bit of black, mix it in, and then if it wasn't enough, then I'll add a little more. You always want to stay on a side of caution and mix little by little because black is a very powerful color. If you mix a little too much, it's going to overtake it and it's going to be very hard for you to recover it back to brown. It's going to make it almost black. And just adding white like it would with all the other colors wouldn't work because it's going to make it gray and not brown. So you're gonna need to actually, depending on how much you overdo it with black, you might just need to have to give up on this one and mix a new one. So that's why it's always great to add a black, tiny touch by tiny touch until you love your brown and then stop. All right, so this is very standard-ish, medium to dark brown. Yeah, you can use raw umber, whichever you have. There are certain areas that are a little bit more, um, they have a bit of a redder undertone. So if you're using raw umber, you might need to uh, mix in a little bit of red in certain areas. And just adjust it, but you can use it as a base for sure. So now I'm going to start in this area. Do you see this light brown? That's the one I'm going to start with. It looks like a hay color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my I'm going to use this medium large brush. I'll take a little bit of my brown that I just mixed, just a touch, not a lot. I'll put it aside and I'll mix in some white. So as you mix that, you will see some color will appear, right? Some beigey color, like the light brown beigey color. In my case, depending on the shade of your brown, which doesn't really matter, it may be a little too warm, a little too cold. In my case, do you see? It's not the exact this color. This is a little warmer than that. This is a little yellower. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take a tiny touch of yellow and add it into it. But mine has a little bit too much red to make that color. So I'll add a little bit more white and a little bit more yellow. And that will give it a colder undertone, more like a greenish undertone, which is exactly what I'm looking for for this particular starter color. So now you see this is closer to that. So again, mix a touch of your brown, whichever brown you have or whichever brown you mixed with white and then based on what that looks like, add what's missing. So if it looks a little pinker, you might get it right from the first try. It's entirely possible. If it's a little too pink, you can always add what I did, yellow and white. Um, if it's a little too green-ish, you might need to add a little bit of red but it should be a bit more yellowy, like it should have a yellowy undertone. And with this color, I'm gonna go right here. And again, don't be afraid to color a little too much because we're gonna overlap all the colors here. So a little too much is perfectly fine. And another only area where I'm gonna add the same color, it's gonna be this corner right here.
All right, so that's our first color. Now our second color is the one that we're gonna make a little more orangey and vibrant. So it's this one, you can see it here, you can see it there. It's still lighter brown based, but it has this orangey undertone like orange brick. So I'm gonna use the same color as a base. And to the same color, I'm gonna add some red and some yellow. Because red and yellow mix orange and we already have enough brown there to keep it dimmed and brownish, but now we just need to make it a little more orange. And again, you might need to try, once you feel like you arrived at the right color, you might need to try it on your canvas to know, because otherwise there is no knowing. You will just have to try and see. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, then adjust it. And potential adjustments may include, for example, if it's just a little too brown or too dim, it doesn't orangey zinc to it. Add a little bit of white because it could mean that you had a bit too much uh, brown as a base so now it looks a little too dim and it's not allowing you to get that vibrant um, orangey undertone. All right I'm happy with this color. And with this color, I'm gonna go right here. Again, I will overlap. Yeah, I'm overlapping black too. And definitely overlap your previous color. We'll add some more right here going up. And again, don't forget to overlap. We'll add even a little bit right here. Now we'll continue all the way there. And a little bit on the top here. All right, that's it for that color. And again, I'll give you guys a couple minutes and then we're gonna move to our next one.
I am so excited to see how this turns out, guys. Let's say we are halfway through. And the hardest part, in my opinion, here is actually this picture. The reason why is because it's such a small area. It has so many colors to mix. Um, and you have to keep the shape right. So yeah, let me get in there. All right, I'm gonna move to my next color. So for my next color, I'm gonna use the same color as a base, the one that we just used, and I'll just add a bit more brown to it. So I'm just gonna darken, darken it up a little by adding brown, and I will add a little bit of red as well to keep it on this warmer side. So you see it got a little darker and it stayed um, with this warmth to it. With this color, oh yeah, do you see the difference? It's not dramatically different. It's still warm brown, but it is darker. And I'm gonna start overlapping right here. I'll cover areas that are not covered yet. Some of them, not all. Like for example, this I'm not covering. Right here. But notice I'm not going all the way up. There's going to be another color. I mean, if you add this one, not a big deal. Another one we can always add over it. Not a deal breaker. So I'm adding some overlapping on the bottom here too. And some on the top as well. Right here. And this is it for this color. Again, I'll give you guys a couple more minutes and then we'll move to similar color. It's still going to be brown, it's just going to be colder. So it's going to have more of a like a greener undertone, our next brown.
And you also notice there are certain areas here on top, like there's a little bit of purple here, um, there's a, a little bit of purple here, and there's some light blue here. We're not gonna add them now. We're actually gonna add them much later when we use those colors on it at other spots on our painting, such as picture. So whenever we use those, we can always come back and just add a flip here and there on a background, on a bottom. We don't have to mix them specifically for those couple spots, especially knowing that we will use those colors later on. So whenever we get to them, that's when we're gonna add them. All right, guys, and for my next color, to the same color I was just using, not my main brow, this color that I just used, I'm gonna add a little bit of blue. So don't overdo this, don't add too much. If it gets actually way too dark, which in my case it got way too dark, I'm actually gonna add just a touch of white again to bring it more to that visible brown versus almost looking black. And it should be like a colder brown. It should be a mix between green and a brow. You should have enough um, yellow there to give this, this yellow hint by just adding blue. If that didn't happen for you, you can just grab, and if you have, let's say, premix green and premix brown, alternatively, how to mix this color is you take a little bit of green, a little bit of brown, a little bit of white, mix them up. You should get to this. Again, it's fairly dark color. It's not on the lighter side, but it's not almost black either. And with this color, I'm going to pretty much color all the remaining white sections here. So I'll color up this. And I'll color up this. I might even need to make it a little dark, uh, a little lighter for that particular section. Oh yeah, this is perfect color. We'll add a little bit of that underneath this point. Again, just dry brush it on top of other colors. A little bit here too, just dry brush it on top.
And you see, you can't really see any, you don't see much of that black that we underlaid. Everything that we underlaid with black that was solid lines more look more like just a darker sections at this point, which is exactly why we did that. We started with black and underlaid um, certain areas with black. And we will go over that again with black later after we've done everything else. So this is pretty much it for our background for now until we get to purples and blues and um, last round black. But that's not going to be now. <laughs> so again, I'll give you guys a minute. Um, whenever you have this, we're going to move to our picture. All right, guys, for next one, I'm going to move to this picture. So for the picture, I'm going to start with a teal color. And I'm going to use my medium small brush. Or just medium is fine, too. So I'll take some white, put it on any area that's not colored yet. So for example, right here. And I'm going to add a little bit of blue to it. And just a little bit of yellow, less than blue, not equal parts. If you add equal parts, it's going to turn uh, green right away. And we're not looking for green. We're looking for blue with a hint of that green or yellow. It's a light teal color. With this light teal color, I'm going to go, actually it needs to be a little more blue. Let's change that. Okay, this is good. I'm going to go right here. I'm going to go right here again. Because this is just the base color, don't be afraid to add a little too much of it. So we can also get rid of all those, whatever we don't use really, or whatever we don't need. 
So for the first colors, it's okay to add too much. And what the difference is now is you have to follow the shape of this picture. You can't really just use straight lines. You have to always follow the shape. All right, that's pretty much every area where I need that teal. Don't need it anywhere else. The next color to the same teal, I'm going to add a little bit more yellow and a little bit more white to make it more yellowy and light. Now this color, I'm going to add just a couple of brush strokes right here. And that is it. Nowhere else. But I'm going to add a very similar color right here. The only difference is going to be even more yellow and even more white. And you can even add a tiny smidge of red there to just give it a little bit of warmth or orange if you have pre-mixed orange. But because I'm using only primaries, I'll add just like the tiniest little smidge of red. And you'll see it will make it a little dimmer and less lemony or like lime greeny. And a more, um, we'll give it just a warmer undertone. And I'll add a little bit of this color here. And that's it for that color. And if you still have a little bit of that teal that we started with, um, you can use that, or if not, you can make a new one that's a little bit darker. So again, white, blue, a smidge of yellow, and mix that all mixed up. This one, you can make a touch darker, actually. And the slightly darker teal, I'll get um, a little bit right here. You see, it's not crazy dark, but it's visibly darker. And I'm going to add that to our background. So remember, we needed to add some teal to our browns. Now's the time because we have it. So with a slightly darker one, the second version. First version will work too, though, so it doesn't really matter. It's just if it's your teal is super light, it may look almost white on your background because you're adding it to such dark colors. So I'm just going to add a flick here and there.
This is where I edit it. If there are any other spots that I don't have it at, but you want to add it, go for it. Technically, any spots that you like on a background, it will work. Now I'll give you guys a couple more minutes. Alrighty guys, now we're gonna do the blue. Do you see there are quite a bit of blue around here? So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna start with um, this darker version of blue. So I will still mix it, it's not a primary blue. So I'm gonna take my primary blue or you can use the darkest blue that you have, whatever you have there. I'll put it on the side. Um, then I'm going to add some white to it so it's not that dark. It still has to be on a darker side, but not that dark. So just a little more white to make it more vibrant. And now red. So not a lot of red because I'm not trying to turn this into purple. But I do want to give it a warmer undertone. So that's why I'll take a little bit of red and add it into it. And again, guys, if your red is more like an orangey red, then no, do not use it. Use more of a pink red or straight pink or magenta, something that with a pinker undertone. Okay, let's try this. Again, we wouldn't know until we try it. That's the right color. So do you see I'm adding pretty solid to the edge and then I'm really dry brushing it towards the middle. Not every, it's not gonna be equal sections. The bottom is gonna be bigger here. There's gonna be more of it there. And also I'm gonna overlap some purple on top in a second. It's not the only color we're gonna be adding here. The same here, pretty solid on the edge. And then a little more transparent closer to the inside. And just a little bit here and right here on a handle. Now 
that is it for this particular color. The next one, I'm going to do a slightly more purple color. So to the same, this is the color I was using. You'll have a little bit and you don't need much for the next step. So I'm just going to take a little more white and edit it because I need it later. And also I'm going to take a bit more red or pink, whatever you're using, and add it in to make it more purple. So see, now that I added red, it brought it back down to darkness, um, which I think this still should be okay. But again, we wouldn't know until we try, so let's try and we'll adjust it accordingly if it doesn't work. Uh, it needs to be a little lighter and a little redder, so I'm going to take even more white and add it in and even more red and add it in. And we'll try again. Oh yeah, now this is a good color. Do you see? You can clearly see the difference. So this is perfect. So I'm going to dry brush it on here. And of course, overlap your blue and on a bottom here. Overlapping pretty much everything. A little bit right here. A um, little bit right here. Here. And handle. So right here. All right, that's it for that color. After that, I'm going to move to all those warmer browns and beiges and we'll fill the inside and kind of tie everything together with uh, those colors. Okay, so for next one, I'm gonna take some white and put it here. And I'll mix it with my brown, the one that we mixed earlier. So just 50-50, maybe even more white than brown. And then I will add some red to it. Again, pinker based red. You see, it's kind of pinker brown. It's like a mix between uh, it looks like a toned down pink color, dusty rose color, or a more like a pink clay color. And with this color, I'm gonna go right here. I'm gonna color this middle. I'm gonna inside and I will bring it a little to the right side too.
much about a couple of brush strokes right here. Just a touch on a handle right here. And just a touch on a bottom right here. The next color I'm going to move to, it's going to be the same, but mixed with white. So I'm going to take lots of white, mix it, not even with all of it, with some of it, to create this lighter shade of that. And with this lighter shade, do you see? It's like a fair pinkish skin tone color. That's what it looks like. I'm going to add it here again. I will be overlapping, so just a touch here, just a touch here. You can color pretty much the entire middle. The rest we can just add on top. Or you can reserve spots for them, doesn't matter. Either will be fine. I think I'm just gonna color in everything. And then the rest of the colors I'm just gonna overlap. Yeah, I'm not going to be coloring in handle though. No handle. All right, I'll give you guys a second to do this. All right, guys, after this, I'm going to take a little bit more yellow and add it into the same color I just used. 
and also a little bit more white to make it um, more yellowy and lighter. And with a little bit of that color, I'm going to go right here. See, like a very light beige. So here, 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 from here to. I have just a few colors left here for picture. And after that, I'm going to take a tiny, I'll make a tiny bit of orange. So that's yellow with a touch of red and a little bit of white. Just like a smidge of that. We don't need much of it. And I'll add it just to be a little warmer. And I'll add it right here, just a touch. And then I'm going to use just a yellow mixed with white. So I'm going to take some white, add in a little bit of yellow. If you want to dim it down just a touch, you can add a smidge of brown, but keep it extremely light. In my case, just white and yellow, nothing else. And I'm going to start adding highlights. So I'm going to add a brush stroke here, a brush stroke here, here. A little bit right here. Some right here. And imitation of circle out of two flicks. So look towards this side. And the half circle in motion and flip towards that side. After that, black, white, and the picture is done. So then I'll move to black. Black, I'm only going to use, um, well, actually, it doesn't matter. You can use smaller brush, you can use medium, small. Smaller is probably the easiest way to do it, unless you're super comfortable with this brush, in which case you can use it too. But small one, the small pointy one, so this one, would probably be the safest brush to use. But again, I'll leave it up to you guys. So I'm going to start adding black. I'm going to be using the top edge of my medium square. Medium small square, actually. But again, it depends whether you can make fine lines out of that or not. Small brush is always the safer choice. You can use both. I really love this brush because you can just tilt it a little bit differently and it gives you wider brush strokes. So that's why I usually stick with this one. But I know a lot of people prefer using two different brushes instead. You see I'm shading it a little bit as well on the inside. A little shading here.
All right, then just a couple very random flicks here. And all shape right here. And I assume that that shape was because that picture was probably bent there. All right, that's all our black there. White, we're not gonna be adding now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let it dry because if we add white right away, it's gonna smudge all our black. Plus, a lot of our fruits have white, so we can always add white whenever we start working on a fruit. Um, it's not a color that we have to mix, so it's always easy to add as a last color. So ta-da, that's our picture. After this, I'm going to start moving on to my fruits and plates. So I'm going to start with a plate. Plate, um, if you want to color in the entire thing white, you can. I personally wouldn't, and the reason why, it's, once it dries, it actually looks like empty canvas. So you're not going to see the difference. But if it makes you feel better knowing that there is a layer of white here, you absolutely can add a layer of white here. It's not going to hurt it. Um, yeah, it doesn't really make a difference. So I'm going to start with a light gray. I'm going to scoop some white on the side, add just a tiny touch of black. And with this light gray, I'm going to add a couple, well, medium to light gray. I'll add a couple of brush strokes here, a touch here, a little bit right here. And some closer to the edge of the plate. Now I'll go a little bit in with this. And I'll add some right here. But uh, now I'm gonna add darker gray. So on the same spot, I'm just gonna add a touch of black to that to make it a little bit darker. And with this a little darker gray, we'll add a little bit more. So you can just add a touch here and there on pretty much the same areas. All right, my plate is done. Maybe I'll add another smidge of darker. Right here. Great. That's our plate. So guys, we're going on two hours here, and I know a lot of you are going to be tired very, very soon. So I'm actually going to pick up the speed a little bit for the fruits. Again, go at your own pace. You don't have to rush through at all. Uh, YouTube gives you ability to pop, to rewind and rewatch section even, even as we are live. So you can always, if you feel like, oh, I'm still like three steps behind, just rewind back. Scroll back to that spot and rewatch it, no problem. And whenever this video is done, whenever the live event is done, the video is going to remain here on our YouTube. And after that, you're going to be, be able to actually pause it. And I know a lot of people prefer that option that you can just pause and uh, take the time with an image fixed on your screen, which I personally like that option too. So just letting you know, 
but if you can keep up with me, great. So here we're gonna move to our um, greens and we're gonna use light, almost yellowy green, medium green and dark green. So nothing special, just a couple colors plus a few flakes of brown and some black. So I'm gonna start with the lighter one. Um, so I'm gonna take some white, let's put it here, that's a good mixing spot. And yellow, so white and yellow, and then just a tiny, tiny smidge of blue added in there. That's my nice light green. And here I'm gonna color in this thing. This entire fruit, well, not entire fruit, really the top part and a little bit on the bottom. And on this fruit, I'll add some right here, top, inch, just a little too. Now, I'm not gonna mix new color in the same spot. I'm gonna leave this spot because I'm gonna use more of this color later. So next one, I'm gonna mix in a different spot. So again, I'll start with yellow, then I'll add a little bit of white, doesn't have to be a lot, and some blue. This time, I'm just gonna add a little bit more blue to mix about medium green. So this looks like a good medium green color. And with this medium green, I'm gonna go right here, right here, right here. I might even add a little more. Yeah, maybe, let's make it a touch darker. Oh yeah, that's great color. And notice I'm not really blending, I'm letting things be chunky. And then I'll add it here. Right here, I'll leave the spot light here. Kind of color in almost everything around it. And just I'll leave a little bit of that lightness on top too. And then I'm gonna move to dark green and again, new spot. So I'm going to start with yellow. This time I'm not adding and a blue and this time I'm going to add a fair bit of blue and you see without adding any black I'm getting a nice darker green. And with this I'm going to go in here just a little bit on the edge here on this section. And on this one. So I'll color this uncolored canvas. I'm just add a smidge of it on the bottom. Ta da! Those colors are done. Now I'm actually going to use straight black, but just a tiny touch of it. And with straight black and tiny touch of it. I'm gonna go right here on this one, on this fruit. I'm actually gonna get closer here. And um, I'm gonna increase the outline a little bit. I'm gonna add that lost outline. Just a touch here and there, it doesn't have to be thick. And again, you can do this with a small brush, it will work just as well, maybe even better. Then very light, with just a tiny touch of paint, I'm gonna dry brush it on right here to darken up the section. You see just the little brush strokes with next to no paint to darken it up. And then I'm gonna fill my brush full of this paint and I'm gonna dab up this section right here. Awesome. Now I'm gonna move to the smaller pair. Um, well, this was apple, so to the pear, really. And again, I'll just add a little bit of black on the outline wherever we lost it, because there are some areas that we lost it completely. And I'll add a little bit right here. A couple of brush strokes. 
and then a brown because it does not have any brown just yet. So let's add brown. I still have that brown that we mixed because I mixed a lot of it for a good reason. So I'm just gonna add a flake of brown here, here, and on this part here. Awesome. Those are done. I'm not gonna be adding white just yet. There is white, but I will be adding white in a second. I'll let them dry up. Um, remember, we still have to add white there, so we'll add it at the same time, whenever it dries up. So let's move to our next fruit. So for our next ones, let's go to this pear here and this tiny apple. So let's start with tiny apple just because it's the same color scheme that we just used. So we already have all those colors mixed. Um, again, I'm going to start with the lightest one. I still have that one. And I will add a little bit right here. Quite a bit right here. And I'll move to medium green. And I'll add that around. But also overlap a little. And then dark green. And I'll bring dark green from the edges. Of course, blend it towards the middle. And add some right in this middle here. And after that, I'm gonna go to black. So I'll wash my brush for this. I'll take a little bit of black. And again, I'll be using the top edge of my brush and remember it makes fine lines. So you can use small brush instead. And I'll add a little bit of outline, just flick here and there. We lost it a bit. Um, I'm gonna add the black right here. I'm using just a touch of black. So I emptied my brush for this on a paper towel. So using just a touch of black, I will add a few brush strokes right here to just darken up that section. And then again, we'll go back to the background, just dry brush on a little bit of black, make a bowl and a little shadow here. Just because while we were at a background, we lost them completely and I couldn't them a little bit there. Done. Now we can go to the pear. So that bright and colorful pear, um, I'm going to start with yellow and yellow mixed with white. So I'll take some yellow, I'll take some white. So here's my white. I'll take some yellow as well. I will mix them up. And I'll color in this pear right here. You can color in it everywhere or you can just color in a majority of it. Totally up to you. I'm going to do majority. I'm not going to do the entire thing. Now I'm going to start adding greens. I have the green. So I'm going to dab off my brush, not even washing it. And I'm going to take my dark green. And I'm gonna add just a couple flicks from the top like this. Right here on the side. Great. Now I'm gonna mix orange. Still mixed with white though. So on the same spot that I had yellow mixed with white, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna add a bit more yellow and then just a tiny smidge of red. Make nice orange, so just typical orange, nothing special about it. Now this orange, I'm gonna flick from this bottom up. And the rest, I'm gonna do straight red. So in my case, I still have to mix my red with yellow. And the only reason why is because 
my red is more of a pink base red. It's not like a true red, not like a fire truck red. And here I want more of an actual red versus pink. So that's why I mix it with the red, uh, with yellow. And I'm gonna start adding brush strokes here. I'm just shading that hair to be darker on the bottom. You can overlap this green too. I'll add a smidge right here. Ta da! The pair is done again, except the white and the top. So, what's at the top? Just straight brown, and I'm gonna flick it. Awesome. All right, next fruits. So we have this combination of four fruits here. Um, they're using very similar colors. Again, all the colors that we use there from greens to oranges, but also this one uses brown. So let's do all three here because this one we're gonna need to mix more colors there. So we'll start with the top one. Top one is super easy, it's just light yellow and dark green and a brown. So if you still have that light yellow that we used, great. Sorry, not light yellow, light greeny yellow. Well, you can use light yellow, it doesn't really matter actually for that one. Something light. And then I'm going to take dark green. So I dabbed off my brush. I'm not even washing it. Just dabbed it off on a paper towel. And I'm going to take that dark green, the same dark green that I've been using throughout the entire um, fruit section. And I'll just add it right here. I actually might need to make more. I am running out of dark green. Just a couple brush strokes there and a couple brush strokes here. You see as it mixes with our underlay of yellow and white, it gets lighter in certain sections, which is good. It's exactly what we want. And then a little bit of brown on top. So right here, it's brown. You see more like a shadow from this stem here, which I just flipped. And a shadow of that falling this way. Awesome. Now I'm gonna do this one. And I'm gonna start with light yellow again. Greeny yellow. Now I'm going to go back to my dark green. Now I'll shade it.
And again, it doesn't have to be all blended. If it's chunky and brushstrokey, that's good. Don't try to get rid of that texture, leave it, let it be. Right, and then I'm gonna take straight black. Another bit of black here. And then I'll dry brush it closer to the edge. I will be adding more brown there, but not yet. I'll add more brown there when we move to this one. For now, I'm gonna let this one dry. And I'll move on this one. And again, I'm gonna start with the same. I'm gonna start with a light yellow there. So just yellow mixed with white. I'll color in the entire thing. Then I'll take a little bit of orange and I'll brush it right over here. And you'll notice it will mix and it will turn more into a peachy color because you're mixing it over the super light, so fresh and wet light yellow. And again, I'm gonna go to our dark green which is color we're using a lot here. And I'll flick some from this side. So technically I'm just flicking from the bottom, just a little bit more closer to the side, but all the way from the bottom really. Again, I'll let that one dry. I'll add more black there, but let's let it dry first. Now let's move to this complicated one because again, as you can see, there are lots of shades of brown in here. So I'm gonna start with a lighter, that orangey brown. Do you remember the brown we used here? The one that was like an orangey one. So that's the one I wanna start with. So again, how I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna start with mixing our primary brown, which I still have. I'll put it on the side here. A little bit of that with some white. That will give me just a medium brown. Then to that I'm gonna add yellow and red to give this this orange undertone. Because yellow and red make orange. All right, and with this color, it's gonna be the base color here. I'm gonna color the entire thing with this. Awesome. Now I'm gonna take more red. Now I'll add more straight red into the same color. And with this mixture, which is pretty red at this point, I'm gonna add a flick here, a couple of flicks right here, a couple of flicks right here. Right here. 
Perfect. Now to the same mixture, I'm gonna add blue, which is gonna make it darker and kind of greener. Pretty much what we did on our background, very similar to that. And if you notice that it's turning more into purple versus green, add more yellow. That means you don't have enough yellow. So just add a bit more yellow and it's gonna turn it more into green. If you're trying to mix this color from scratch, that is brown mixed with green and maybe a touch of white. That's pretty much what it is. Thanks, Rita. And I'm gonna go with this even further to darken up, so to make this a bit darker as it goes to the edge. And then the last color that I'm going to add, well, not last one actually, still have quite a few, but for now, last one is going to be black. So I'm just going to take black and I'll brush it in and blend it. So I'm going to start by just adding a bit of an edge again, using the top edge of my brush, but you can use small brush for this. Now I'm gonna brush it in to just darken up the actual pair. So I'll darken it up a little here. And I'll make another little line of darkness here. Then I'll add stem look there and now I'm going to start adding black to the other fruits in this group as well so again I will add outline wherever needed on any fruit and then if needed a little bit of darkness so a couple of dabs here and some darkness here behind it just dry brushing it on some darkness here behind it dry brushing it on um, a bit of outline to this one. Dry brushing as well, so dry brushing here. Dry brushing underneath here, a little bit of a shadow. And a bit of darkness to this one. Just the outline really. All right, so those have black. Now they're still missing a couple of colors. So this one missing brown and it's already uh, dry. So we can go ahead and add our brown. You can use small brush or the top edge of medium brush again. And I'm just gonna take some white and mix it with some brown to make about medium brown. No particular shade, as long as it's medium brown. And with this, Maybe even a little bit darker than that. I'm going to add it here, so closer to the outline. So just a little uh, tiny dabs or brush strokes. Perfect. Now I'm going to go on to this brown pair and I'm going to add a lighter color. So I'm going to take some brown. Actually, we can try the same color we just added. Uh, it just has to be lighter than this. So whatever is lighter than that, we can add that. And as long as it has brown undertone, it's perfect. So let's try this and we'll know for sure. Oh yeah, that's good. So this lighter color, we'll just add a couple of burst strokes here. A little bit, a couple dabs there to separate our fruits. Great. Now, all our fruits are done, except none of them have white. So we're gonna add white highlights to all, all our fruits and a picture. 
Okay. Oh, perfect. So do you see? Let's start with the picture. Why not? So just try to wait, not a lot of it, but a, a good bit as well, not just a touch either. And a lot of the flicks here, a lot of flick here, here, on a handle. Very important right here. Touch here. And here. Done. That one doesn't need any more white. Now our fruits. So let's go to this too. I'm gonna add a tiny little highlight. Oh, too much paint on my brush. Let's empty it a little. Just a touch of white here and a good solid flicker of you right here. Then on this one, I'm going to go more towards the top. So add a little bit in the middle, but also a couple of flicks around that top line. For this pair, Going to be the middle, a little bit on the top line. The next ones, most of them don't have any. They don't have anything going on, except this one. This one has a little bit of highlights right here. Now, guys, the only thing that's left is one last color. And that one last color is purple on a background. And it's a very um, dusty and kind of darker purple. So let me show you here. You see this one? That's what I'm talking about. It's super dusty, kind of medium-ish. If I didn't tell you it was a purple, it's hard to recognize what color that is. But it is a dusty purple. So we're gonna add a little bit of that, and you see, it kind of goes everywhere in the background, not just here. All right, so let's make it. We'll put that on away. For now, we don't need it. Let's make that dusty purple. Um, I'll start with white, just a little bit of white, doesn't need to be much, then red. And then the blue touch by touch because you usually don't need as much blue as red. Um, blue is more dominant color. So this is a great purple. Let me try a tiny touch. This is going to be really bright. Actually, this is nice. Oh yeah, this is very nice. So, but I do want to make it a little bit dustier because this is just bright purple. So I'm just going to add a bit more white to it because it's still a little too dark for me. And brown, just to make it dimmer. Tiny touch though, not a lot because we're not trying to get rid of this purpleness. And if you add too much brown, it's just going to lose all the purpleness of this color. So this is now nice dusty purple. So again, I'll just take a dry brush. I'll dry brush it on. So just a little bit. I'm going to start right here. Oh yeah. Beautiful. You see it has a hint of purple, but it really matches our background. It goes into it really well. Like it doesn't look like it's from a different story because we dimmed it down with our brown. So we'll add a little bit of it there. Um, you can help yourself with a, with a finger as I'm doing. Or not, totally up to you. I'll add a little couple of brush strokes on top here. You see, it doesn't, again, it matches the background so well. It doesn't look like it doesn't belong there because it totally does. Just a little bit there. Um, I'm gonna add a touch right here. Dry brush it on to you. Okay. 
And now this is it. Yes, you're welcome. And the last thing I'm going to be doing is signing, of course, because you can't not sign it. So I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to sign it. Even though it's not my original, this is Paul Cezanne. He's incredible, just beyond words. But this is my copy. I took a lot of time to make this, so I think I have full right to sign my copy of his painting. So sign it somewhere right here. All right, guys, and as you notice, this is an extremely difficult piece. It has tons of tons of uh, details and lots of color mixing. And let me show you the other one. And again, none of them are original. Original is Paul Cezanne's painting. This is my version of it um, that I tried to break down for you guys into, you know, manageable steps. There is nothing easy about it, but it is a great painting. It's a great learning painting. Um, and it's just beautiful painting. And it's, you know, the best way to learn art is copy the famous artists and learn their technique, learn their tips and tricks, learn their styles. So yes, uh, feel free to share your results with us. We love, love, love seeing um, all the results. You can just post them anywhere on our Facebook page, wherever you would like, under any comment or specifically on event page made for this particular painting. I'll actually put you a link right here um, in chat here so you guys don't have to go and search for it. Well, let's see. So here's a link to the event page where you can just go there and post your results there. If you would like, no pressure. If you don't want to, that's totally fine. Or if you um, prefer, you can just post on our page, on our Facebook page, anywhere you want. We'd love to see it. Um, another thing, guys, if this is your first time painting with us, thanks for joining. Feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We go live here in summer once a week, but in fall, winter, and spring, about twice a week. And it's always something different and fun. And all the videos stay on our page here. So you can always come back and watch some other ones. We have a lot already. And again, adding constantly. So feel free to subscribe. And if you guys had fun, and if you want to tip me, you can. Not a pressure. You don't have to. I'm happy to do this. But if that is your way of saying thank you, you can do that as well. And I will post a link for you that you can use to do that. It's a PayPal link. All right, that is also posted. Now, does anyone have questions before I go? If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll answer them to the best of my ability. And if not, that's okay too. And also, you can always email us your questions or message us on Facebook. Uh, we try to respond pretty much right away, except of summer, because you know, summertime, fun time, everyone just wants to be outside and take advantage of the good weather while it lasts, because it doesn't last a very long time. All right, no one has questions. I'm gonna let you guys um, enjoy your evening and finish this whenever you can or want to. Again, thanks for joining me, and I hope to see you again. Bye, guys.